Hi guys, Jamie here again from NoCode.ie and uh, this is uh, part two of, of, of the two part um, tutorial as to how to create a client portal using software.io um, and you can build a client portal really for any type of of, of business out there. I've I've used um, an accountancy firm as, as a dummy example in, in this scenario. What you'll need in order to follow along with this video is, um, is you can get a free subscription to software software.io and also you can get a, a free Airtable subscription. So software.io is a visual no code developer tool. It allows you to build all sorts of websites and web applications and it's powered with um, an Airtable database in the back end. If none of these terms make any sense to you, I'll be doing other videos as to what um, you know Airtable is and what software is. So please subscribe to my channel if, 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 if you like the content here and if you'd like to see more videos like this and um, okay let's 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 jump right in because I'm trying to do this in the space of a few minutes really just to show you how how quick and how how, how effective this tool is at developing attractive looking very functional very practical tools okay so as a starting point I've set up the dummy data here in in our table right I've set up um, just one table for now being documents key uh, to this table really is um, having your client email so anybody that signs up to your web page have that um, in each row in terms of the data that you want to be displayed in their client portal dashboard when they log in so the way software currently works at the moment and it's now in March of 2021 is that it allows you to filter what each user sees when they log in based on their email right and i'll show you what that means now in, in a second so all i've put in here and again this isn't a prescribed format but it'll give you an idea of what way to set up your air table so as to display things in software all i've put in really is the name and um, the a note a description and you'll see where all of this displays um, in software in just a moment I've attached in the actual documents so if you were an accountancy firm and, and and you were filing each of each document for each of your clients you might use your Airtable as a document storage system and, and store them this way and this will then be the back end to your shared client portal site that it ha your clients have access through to, through your website right um, I've put in a status and um, I've put in a type so that people can filter by document type because you might have multiple that return say for instance for one particular client you might have multiple income tax computations over a number of years with a given client and so it's, it's it'll be useful for a client to say filter by a document type if they're looking for a specific type thing or to or to search for a type and again here then i have the thumbnail so this is just to uh, to give a visual representation of what that particular record I I is and it, i suppose it makes your data or your list look look appealing i suppose to your user uh, when they log in okay so that's a brief overview on the Airtable setup um, and again this isn't what it needs to, it doesn't need to be set up this way you can set it up as is useful for your particular business you might have more fields you might have less fields you might even have more tables right and we can go into that at a later later stage how that would work in software so if we jump back over into software then right first thing is I've logged in here I'm going to start a new application from scratch here okay so I'm going to start a blank application. It's a web app, and um, so software works by uh, basically what's called blocks, and each block is basically a, a building block. It's almost like Lego for building your each page within your within your web app or within your website. So in this particular one, I'm going to add. Um, I'm going to add obviously a, a header is always the starting point. So you'll see here this is similar to in uh, step one in, in video one of two in this particular tutorial you'll see the finished product and what it is that i'm building here right and this will look familiar to anybody that has watched the first video it looks exactly like this so i've used this straight out of the box obviously you can update your own logo here if that's what you want to do but in the interest of time i'm just going to keep moving ahead with just the basics and you know obviously customization is fully there and again we might show that in a further tutorial as to the level of customization you can do in here so the next block I'm going to add is I'm going to add just some sort of a, a hero type thing and I'm going to literally build the thing from, from video one that, 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 that we saw earlier so um, 
I'm going to put in some sort of blurb here. Run your accountancy firm your way, okay? And, um, you know, obviously this would be sort of a landing page aimed at other accountancy firms looking to maybe install this type of a client portal on their web page. Um, but you could also just have this for your own accountancy firm. Like, so, um, uh, welcome to your client dash board login. Um, you know, accountancy firm is a leading online digital accountancy agency. Okay, so that's really your landing page. Now, what we need to do next is um, we need to add all of the various login pages and sign up pages. So, we're going to do that very quickly. So, I'm going to go login. And here we go, say login page. I'm going to add a sign up page and I'm going to click save on my login page. It's going to automatically have the header on each of your pages, right? So, in this particular page, I'm going to go and put in the pre built um, sign in uh, block, which, which uh, Pre built, so everything's pre built here. I'll just have to come back to it in a second to create the link to the sign up page. But in the meantime, I need to actually put the block into the sign up page. Apologies, I'm going too quickly here. I just don't really want my video to run into, um, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes in length. Now, having said that, it might run to that length, but let's see how we go. Okay, so pages, I'm going to go back into my sign up page here and I'm going to choose my block, which is again a user account block, and it's going to be this sign up uh, form here. Okay. So the sign up form I can click into and, and software allows me to edit all of the various fields and, and tell it what the links should do. So after a sign up, um, I'm going to have to come back to that part uh, because I don't yet have my portal page set up. But what I do want is when somebody clicks on this sign in link here, I want them to be redirected to the login page that I just set up there. OK, so I can do that now and I'm going to come back here and I'm going to create portal page. So this is the page that will display when a user signs up or when a user after they've signed up logs in. Okay. And when they log in, they will only see information that is relevant to them as their logged in user. Okay. So I'll save the portal page. Um, when I go, I'm going to go back now to the login page and tell it what to do when somebody clicks uh, the login uh, or the sign in button. So if we scroll down here um, it's got the sign up and it's got the sign in so sign in button it's got a, it's a pre pre prescribed action which basically is set up in software that it will sign your user in and um, when a user signs in i want them to go to the portal page as opposed to the home page right now i haven't pulled anything on the portal page but that'll come next I uh, forgot a password. I don't have that set up yet, but again, that's something you can do. It's not critical for what I'm demonstrating in this tutorial, but this is where somebody forgets a password and it leads them down the various um, steps that they must take in order to res reset their password, right? Um, so sign up, I'm gonna, this is where somebody lands on the sign in page and they are not yet a user and they want to sign up. So when they click sign up, I want them to be redirected to the sign up page. So I'm gonna click that there. So that's my um, sign in page uh, set up and I have also set up my sign up page. So now all I have really left to do is um, I need to add in a new header that only logged in users see because when you log in, I don't want somebody to see still the sign in function and still the sign up function. And then the last thing we need to do is look at the actual portal page and, and, and put in the, the data, which is basically going to be a visual representation of your database here from, from Airtable from earlier. So if we go back to the home page, we'll do the header part first. So this is where it gets interesting, right? This is a, a, a relatively new feature from software whereby you can um, edit the visibility of different blocks based on whether your user is logged in and also based on other parameters. So in this scenario, I only want this header to be visible and you just click this little eyeball icon up here when you've selected the header. I only want this header to be visible when it's a non-logged in user because I want a non-logged in user to have all of these options, i.e. sign in or sign up. 
So I'm going to select that as non-logged in users, and that is only visible at that point in time. Now what I do is add a second header, um, and this time I'm going to have it as the same header, but this time the visibility setting will be for logged in users. So all logged in users will now see this header across all, all web pages across um, this particular web application. Now, obviously, I don't want them to have all of these. Um, you know, I don't. I don't want a logged in user to have the sign in or the sign up button. So I'm going to come down. I'm going to edit this particular um, header, and I'm going to come down to the bottom here, and I am actually going to. Um, I'm going to change this to sign out, and the action is sign out, and I'm going to remove the sign up button because that's no longer relevant. I'm also going to delete some of these, um, you know, features and pricing is no longer relevant to a, to, to a signed in user. So I'm going to delete that so that they just have home and contact page. Okay, so that's virtually that. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. It might not make sense now because you might be asking why are there two headers? There won't be. They'll, they'll only see one depending on whether they're logged in or, or not. Okay, so last piece of this puzzle is to go to your portal page. Now on my portal page, I'm going to add a block. I'm going to use what's called a list block. Um, you might not be able to see it because my face is in the way, but a list block is basically a, a block that lists your data from an underlying Airtable database, right? I'm going to choose this particular block because I think it looks quite visually appealing. And what you need, what you now need to tell software is where to pull all of the different bits of information to populate this template. So as in what picture to put here, here, and here, what title to put here, here, and here. And so I'm going to click on that and it's asking me to integrate my Airtable API key. I'll show you how to do that. I'll probably pause the video when I'm actually putting in my API key so that uh, obviously for privacy reasons. So. You come in here to settings and you click integrations and you click Airtable and it's asking you to put in the Airtable API key. Where you find your Airtable API key is if you go into Airtable and if you go into um, if you go into this thing here and go API documentation, it'll be in there. Or alternatively, if you click on your account, you'll find your API code in there. Um, so I am going to pause the video now, and I will um, I will be back to you in just a moment. Okay, so I've input the API key in here under Airtable. You'll know if it's worked if you get your green dot here. So I'm going to click back to my portal page. Oh, actually, one second. I need to click save down below here. So save. It's now got my API key um, installed. I'm going to re-click on this block, and it's now allowing me to select which um, which base to use. In this case, it's my Accountify base that I've set up here. It's going to ask me what table. I only have one table being this documents table. You might have multiple tables, and you might prefer to show one particular table here, then maybe add another block to show another table there. So let me choose my documents table. And the default view, I'm just going to go grid view. You can sort it. So as in, for example, if I had a date in this table, which I don't, you could sort it by, say, most recently added documents. Um, OK, so here's where this is. This is also the, the, the very interesting part, and it's a very new feature in software. Um, and this is whereby I'm telling I'm going to basically um, program into software that I only want um, the records here, I only want the documents here to be shown for the current logged in user. I don't want a, a user logging in and being able to see other users' documents. So what you do is here, show list items to the user that match any of the following conditions. And what I'm going to select is the client email. Um, it must is, it must equal the logged in user's email, okay? So that just means, when somebody logs in, they will only see their own um, records, which has their client email beside them. So client one will only see anything that has client one beside them, and client two will only see anything that has client two beside them. So we'll come back here. Um, I'm going to allow people to filter by this type field here, and I'll key in the different types that I have. Uh, one is 
bash returns from memory returns uh, and what i'm trying to do here is basically anything that i have in this type record over here in the table i'm trying to put that as something that the user can filter by so if i come back here that returns is one income tax return 2019 and another one management management accounts is another one and then um, what's the last one i think there's only oh, yeah, engagement letter was the last example document type that i put in so that'll create these various filter options here at the top um, I'm going to leave the search bar in. I think that's useful. You need to tell it what what it can, what it is searching. So in this case, I'll say that it's searching the type record. So if somebody types in VAT or tax return, it should only show that particular doc type of document. Now what you do is in your list items, it's basically everything below the search bar here is your list items. And you're basically telling um, software where to pull the various bits. So the image is this part. The title is, is this part, the title here, and the subtitle is the subtitle here. So I'm gonna click here and it's basically giving you the various headings from your Airtable base here, right? So my picture is obviously in thumbnail here. So I'm gonna go and pick thumbnail. The title, I want that to be the type of document in this scenario. Um, and you'll see title comes up there, engagement letter. The subtitle then I'm going to put in the, um, I think I have a description in here somewhere, notes. So we'll put that in and it gives just a little bit of a description and that can be whatever it might be describing that particular document. Um, button label, I'm going to rename that as review. So the button is basically an overlay on top of the picture here, which I'll show to you in a second. And I want it to actually open the attachment that is associated with that particular record. So that's how you do that, open external URL attachments. And in my base here, I have the various PDF documents that I'm attaching in for my clients in this attachments um, uh, field. Okay, so look, I think we're, we're virtually um, there. I will... Um, I will on click. I want to give the option to also open the document. So that's if they click anywhere other than the button on the record. I also want that to enable the user to um, to, uh, to 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 open the attachment. And um, that is essentially it. So uh, in the next, this was meant to be only a two part video, but actually it's going to turn into a third one in the next in the in the next installment. I'm going to show you. Um, what I've just created here, it I, I already showed you one I made earlier in the first clip, um, and in the third clip it will, um, it, you'll just see that I've effectively recreated it in. I've gone a little bit over time, it took 18 minutes, um, but I mean I think 18 minutes is quite good considering this would in prior to software and prior to the uh, availability of no code tools as they are today would probably have taken days as opposed to minutes so um, I'm fairly impressed by it I don't know if you are but if you have any questions on anything in this video please leave them in the uh, comment section below um, I am uh, obviously I'm I'm I, I'm setting up a, a, a community. I'm I'm looking for anybody that is is as excited about this as I am in terms of um, building uh, tools and also possibly building brand new businesses through the use of no code tools. Um, and if you want to join my community, please go along to nocode.ie. There'll be a link in the description down below. And thanks for your attention and um, I hope it wasn't too dull or I hope I didn't make too many mistakes as you know as I kind of a common theme in my thing is I just do one shot videos and um, I am a new I, I, I am newly uh, I've only recently become a father and I also run a small business so I don't really have much time in terms of um, I suppose editing and fine-tuning and perfecting these videos so apologies if the quality is is not um is not great and um, but i hope the content and what is demonstrated here is is uh, m m makes up for it in some shape or form okay look i'll stop blabbing now i've used my quota of words for the day and uh, thanks for your attention and video three to follow